Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. I'm Duran with DuranSupply.com where I help you design smarter, not harder. Today, I'm gonna do a full breakdown of this little Uzi Vert graphic. So let's get to it. All right, so I'm in the Photoshop file here and this is actually a relatively simple layout for a design compared to what I usually do. So hopefully this doesn't take too long. I'm gonna turn all this off so we can start from the bottom up. So I actually started off with this sort of makeshift logo that I did uh, for Uzi. So when I got this project in my email, I was told to go for sort of a rock star feel and explore that sort of vintage rock uh, design aesthetic for Uzi. So I thought I'd give him more of a rockish logo. I forgot what typeface I used here. I made this in Illustrator and then I just copied that over to Photoshop. But yeah, so I just threw this together really quickly and I thought it hit that mark. So I kept it. By the way, this design did not get used officially for Lil Uzi. I don't know if I made that clear or not, but I still really really loved this design and this is what y'all voted on in my instagram story poll for me to break down so go follow me on instagram that's at duran studio if you want to vote on the next design breakdown video okay so next up we had to pimp this text out and what better way to do that than with some retro chrome specifically using my chrome tone actions for photoshop which is available on my website let me hide all the rest of these layers here so we can see just the raw result from my chrome tone action so again this is from my chrome tone actions it is the 80s preset here real fun stuff you can pick this up on my store if you want to get your chrome on uh, one of my favorite actions to use across a ton of different projects so it's got the glow sort of embedded in it which requires the use of this full black background which you see in the layer thumbnail here but if you want just the text without the, the little extra glow here which i wanted because i was going to add my own glow later and also wanted to put some layer styles on this layer you can just turn this this uh layer mask on by clicking it and then i'll remove the or re-enable the layer mask rather so now we have just that chrome text with the perfectly sharp edges of the original text and that just gives me a little bit more leeway to do my own sort of glow here and my own effects on this. The glow that is generated by a chrome tone is actually really, really nice. And I rarely ever hide it because it's such a nice and soft glow. But for this specific design, I really wanted a heavier glow and I was going to add some lightning and all. So I just turned that off and I added a ton of glow and lightning to this. Let me dive right into this. So I have these two sort of stock images of lightning down here. I'll turn the rest off. So just two sort of stock images of lightning that I masked onto this specific part of the design which I feel like I did later on in the design because this is more sort of filling out a part of the composition that was a little empty when I started adding all the other stuff but either way this was a part of the lighting that I added for the text again just some stock photos of lighting that are layer masked out to this part of the composition I'm not entirely worried about the color or anything right now because I dealt with all that later next up we have this general sort of large glow surrounding the text this is just done using a duplicate of the text layer with a drop shadow layer style on it so here are the effects or the settings that I use on that drop shadow to get that really nice blue glow around the text you'll also notice this sort of drop shadow on the chrome logo here so i actually added a drop shadow layer style on the chrome tone layer and it's very simple it's just a black drop shadow uh, set down a little bit and that just gives it some depth and separation from the backing which would be the lightning and the glow and finally to add on to the lightning and glow effects i have this electrify effect which i got or generated using the iCandy plugin for Photoshop, which I find in filter exposure software iCandy 7. So I actually mentioned this exact plugin in, I don't know, two videos ago in my 3D text tutorial. So iCandy is a, an amazing plugin. I personally paid a, a one-time fee to get lifetime access to the plugin, but there is a free 30-day trial for this. So just go search up iCandy for Photoshop and get this plugin if you wanna mess around with it. As you can see, we got a ton of cool effects that we can use like this extrude effect or what I just used was the electrify effect which generates some lightning around your layer. So cool, yeah, that's how I got this little lightning effect around the text that sort of perfectly aligns with the edges of the logo here. Really, really cool stuff. And on top of all this, I have a color overlay which is just a color fill layer set to this, this nice sort of blue color that I wanted. And I set the blending mode to color to colorize all of this, everything that was below it. And I have this hue and saturation layer right above that which I just used to sort of increase the luminance of the blues here and turn down the saturation a bit, just so it wasn't so heavy and, and saturated. So I just changed the hue very slightly, turn the saturation down and turn the brightness or lightness of that blue color up a bit. So we're left with this sort of nice faded blue color on our text 
and lightning and whatnot. Okay, so now let's check out Low Uzi. Let me break this down. So I'll turn off all these layers here and start from the ground up once again. So all the way in the back, I have this sort of spiked circle effect going on. I have no idea where I found this image and no idea how it ended up in my Photoshop document, but it is a really cool asset. This sort of spiked circle look, all these spikes sort of protruding from the center, which I thought really matched with Uzi's spiky hair, which we'll see in a second here. I added some drop shadows and some other layer styles on here to give it sort of that glow look. So I'm gonna turn all those off. You can see what the original, I guess, image is here. And I just added some glows on top of that. And I also put that in a group and layer masked it to random parts around the composition, which doesn't make sense now, but you'll see later how it fits in with the rest of the subject matter. Then to add even more to the backing, there's this pretty cool sort of cracked glass texture that I really wanted to use somewhere in this design. And I tried a bunch of places and it ultimately just didn't work too well. So I just layer masked a very small part of that out into the backing here, which was a super small detail and doesn't really play any sort of a huge role in the design. But you'll see later that once I add Uzi and the whole rest of everything back in here, it sort of just adds a cool little dynamic effect into the composition and adds to the background of it, which is always fun to sort of piecemeal little things together to make the overall composition look just a little bit more dynamic. So you'll see once I turn everything else on that these little spikes here and this cracked glass texture add sort of a nice touch. But as of right now, it kind of just looks weird. Okay, so now the rock star, the subject matter of this design, little Uzi, I'll turn that layer on. And for sake of this just not looking as bad as it does right now, I'm also gonna turn on this hue saturation adjustment layer, which is set to colorize, to colorize everything below it. And I just made this all a bluish tone to match the text. And I, of course, also masked out little Uzi's face so that he doesn't turn blue along with everything else but anyway this is starting to come together now obviously this is just a photo of Lil Uzi with his face and his very cool spiked hair masked out I also left in some of the background of I guess it was the concert which just adds a little bit of glow or just general backing of color to the rest of the design and then doing some heavy lifting here I have this just a, a circle layer here with the fill set to zero and some drop shadow layer styles on this to give it sort of that outer glow look. So this is just a few drop shadows here, which I'll show you the settings of, which give it that sort of glow look. And of course the fill is on zero, so you can't see the actual circle. You can only see the layer styles applied to it. If I were to turn that fill all the way up, we would have this black circle just sitting in the middle of our design. But I wanted all the rest of the elements to peek through here. So I made the fill zero and just had the outer glow of the circle be present. And then on top of this, I just have these all in some groups here so I can layer mask out different things like this layer mask just uh, sort of fades out the bottom of Lil Uzi here. And then this layer mask on top of all this, it just makes way for that text to sort of shine through the elements like Uzi and the circle and whatnot. Okay, and on top of that, I've got these two stock photo images, which are the same image. Actually, I just duplicated it uh, to double the effect. It's just like a, a big lens flare sort of, not sure what to call this. I don't even know what I searched for, but it's sort of just like a big circular lens flare. I'll show you the full image here. So yeah, some sort of circular flare, which I then set to screen and then layer mask onto certain parts, specifically the bottom of this sort of circular part of the composition here. And then on top of this, I've got some more flares, some lens flares. These are from uh, Studio AAA's lens flare kit which is an absolute beast of a kit. I love that I use it every time I need to add flares to anything, especially on Chrome text like this. So go pick that up from Studio AAA. Jack is the absolute man. He makes some very cool stuff along with his paid premium design assets. He has a ton of really cool free design assets that he has to offer. So go check out Studio AAA, love them. So yeah, I just placed these lens flares sort of around town on the chrome text and around Uzi and the little circle here, just to give this uh, design some more flair and shine. And that is the bulk of the composition. But now on top of all this, we have the saving grace of this low quality madness, which is our processing effects. Boom, crazy stuff. Let's break it down. So this is actually just a series of a ton of different adjustments. I'll go one by one here and show you what they do. So first up, I just have a levels adjustment on top of all this to make the whole design just a tad bit brighter, specifically 0.14 tonal levels brighter. So super, super slight brightness adjustment there. And on top of that, this is extremely important. 
this is a noise pattern that I have set to overlay. If I'm not mistaken, this is a noise pattern from my Vintone template, but you don't need Vintone or any of my templates to have this in your design. Although of course I'd recommend picking up Vintone or Depth Tone or any of my tone templates because they're all great, but this is simply just a noise pattern on a 50% gray layer. So if you wanna make this yourself, all you have to do is make a new layer, do shift backspace to fill it with gray, and then go up to filter, camera raw filter, and go down to effects, and just crank that grain up, choose whatever grain settings you like. And then once you're done with that, you can simply set that layer to overlay and mess with the opacity to get that noise apply to the image at whatever sort of strength you want it to be. So yeah, that is just a very simple noise pattern overlaid across the entire design, which is gonna become really, really helpful in just a moment here. That is a very important step of this process. Next up, I have a selective color adjustment here, which I use to darken up the blues and give them more of a rich color, as well as darken and saturate the colors on Uzi's face a bit more. So I'll go through these settings here. The reds affected mostly the skin tone, so I just decrease the sign on that and increase the magenta and the yellow to get that a bit warmer. So if I turn it on and off, you can see that Uzi's face gets a little bit darker and warmer with these effects on the red tones of the image. And then the only other sliders I played with was the cyan slider, which I used just to get more of a darker uh, and richer blue on the cyans of the image. So these are the settings I use for that. Kind of just uh, toyed around with them and moved these sliders until I found something that looked good. And then I think I also messed with the neutrals here. Yeah, just boosted the black up a bit to get more of a darker luminance on all of the colors within the design. So extremely simple selective color adjustment, but I do that all the time just to dial in these sort of colors that I really want for the design. Okay, next up we have something very important, which is this threshold adjustment layer which as you can see, turns this into sort of like a whole new design once you turn it on. When I composited this design, I had this already going, so I wasn't too worried about it being so sloppy. But as you can see, without the threshold, this is a really sloppy design. There's just color and light in, in spaces where I really don't need it to be. And there's honestly a bit too much going on. The image is also really low quality. And in these shadows, there are these really disgusting JPEG artifacts uh, that I just really need to get rid of. So to tighten this all up, and bring it all together, I use a threshold adjustment to get rid of all the unnecessary color and light in some of those spaces and pretty much absolutely darken the shadows of this image to pure black. And that helps, of course, to cut down on all unnecessary sort of info within the design. Like you saw earlier, all the extra color and light in some of the areas here and all of the compression and disgusting JPEG artifacts in this image, especially in the shadows. But this would not be possible without the use of this noise pattern down here. So if I turn that off, you can see that the threshold just looks extremely ugly now because there's no noise pattern all the way down here to sort of dither the design and give it that texture that's needed for threshold to look good. So make sure you have a noise pattern set to overlay if you want to use a technique like this. You're also probably wondering why the threshold isn't making everything black and white. So if I turn the blending mode of that to normal, you can see what the threshold adjustment would do in any case where you add a threshold adjustment. But in this case, I just wanted to isolate the black values that the threshold adjustment yields. And we can do that by simply setting the blending mode of the threshold adjustment layer to darken or multiply. And that will isolate only the black spots of the threshold adjustment. That also works in reverse. If say you wanna isolate only the highlights or the white parts of the threshold adjustment, you could just set this layer to lighten and now we have only the white parts. But for this design, since I had a black background, obviously I wanted to isolate black parts of that threshold. Okay, and finally, on top of all that, I have my worn plastic salt textures just sitting on top of this design, giving it a vintage feel and more of a faded look. So I'm using the third worn plastic salt texture, again, from my worn plastic salt texture kit, which you can download on my website. It's got a ton of really, really cool and authentic vintage worn out plastic salt textures for you to use on your designs and you can use the code youtube15 for 15 percent off of your order but anyway i've got this warm plastic salt texture set to multiply to get all these nice little cracks onto the design and finally i just added an exposure adjustment layer to sort of brighten up everything within the design and make it just more visible and appealing to the eyes so this was one of the final designs that i submitted uh for a little oozy merch fortunately did not get through but 
that's okay. So that is how I made that little Uzi design from scratch. I hope you enjoyed watching the process of me breaking that down. If you have any requests for more design breakdowns, please leave that in the comments or shoot me a DM on Instagram. Again, that is at Duran Studio. I love doing these types of videos and I hope you love it too. So with that being said, if you like the video, like this video. If you like me, subscribe to the channel. I post videos like this every week to help you become a better designer. And I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace out.